welcome to uh, a video out of the ordinary for me, at least for my videos, for my type of style of videos that I do here on YouTube. Uh, I would like to just give people a heads up here. This will be basically my first really review for a, a video game I ever did. And I think the only review that I really tried to, um, that I attempted video wise was Super Smash Bros. Brawl on the Wii. And that was a really old video. You guys can still check it out if you want to, but I ended up reviewing that game. Lots of people thought um, I was a pretty good reviewer and um, I did pretty good, but um, I'm looking for all types of feedback here, whether you guys like the game, uh, no matter what you guys think about the game, uh, Infinite Warfare and the Modern Warfare Remastered, just some feedback about these type of videos. I'm thinking about possibly continuing to do video reviews for maybe possibly movies or maybe video games or any sort of news out there, gaming related and stuff. But, as you know, um, <clears throat> Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, there's always a new Call of Duty every single year. Um, this year we have Call of, Duty, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare and Modern Warfare Remaster all in one. Uh, why they didn't sell the game separately is beyond me, but uh, I feel like they purposely did it just for uh, money-wise, but I think uh, they knew most people were mostly hyped for Modern Warfare Remaster. But in my video, I'm going to start with Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. And I'm going to kind of go out of order here because I know the multiplayer is where uh, Call of Duty shines and most people care about the most uh, when it comes to Call of Duty. Uh, me being a hardcore Call of Duty fan and me playing all types of games of different genres uh, uh, and growing up with games from the 1990s, I don't really look at graphics and stuff. And I'm not going to really factor that into my review and saying, oh, it has to have the best graphics and uh, so depending on the score that I give it in my video. Uh, here, graphics is not going to be a major factor into what I think about the game. Now, let's talk about the campaign for Infinite Warfare. So, right after the campaign, I'm going to talk about the zombies and then I'll do multiplayer last. Since that's going to be the major thing people are going to be looking forward to the most and curious about. Um, for this game, the campaign, I'm not going to share any sort of spoilers about who dies and uh, who gets kills or anything like that. But, um, I'm going to talk about my experience about the campaign and what I got out of it. This was one of the best damn campaigns I ever played in a first person shooter, honestly. And to be honest, I have never played any better first person shooter campaign besides this one, um, other than Call of Duty Modern Warfare that I still have. I still have the original game. I got this game from in 2007. This is one of the greatest games I ever played for first person shooter wise, multiplayer in the campaign. Now, for Infinite Warfare, I think the Infinite Warfare campaign beats out the Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare campaign by, I would say, slightly. It's slightly just as good, just as uh, a little bit better than this one because this one was really good and this game alone really got me into the Call of Duty franchise. I know some of you guys out there may have started on a different Call of Duty game, maybe it's Modern Warfare 2. Some of you guys out there, uh, some fans of mine just started on Black Ops 1, the original Black Ops or Black Ops 2, or maybe War at War was your first. Uh, it depends on what you got into first. But uh, I was a Halo guy before I even got into Call of Duty because my last Halo game was Halo 3 before I even discovered Call of Duty based off because of this game. That really got me into the series. But the campaign was really enjoyable. What did I like about the campaign? The characters, the voice acting. And when I was, when I, as I played the game throughout my videos and stuff, I was sitting back watching the, uh, just playing the game, enjoying it. It was just so much intensity, just uh, explosions, destruction, and you know, all types of different chaos. You didn't even know what was going to happen next. And it was just, uh, just from what, what, when I was playing, I, I just couldn't predict what was going to happen next. And right when you thought a character was going to die, uh, someone comes out of nowhere and ends up uh, saving their life and uh, ends up coming in, with, in through the clutch, I like to say. Coming in clutch and being an MVP and going out of their way to really save different characters and do what they can to sacrifice themselves and really become a hero through heroic actions, sacrifices themselves, sacrificing themselves for other characters for the fight, for the sake of... Uh, the mission uh, and for the sake of the mission's success and uh, basically the villain out of this whole campaign was Set Death and this guy Admiral Cotton, uh, Raya and um, 
other characters that you could go after. You could go after most wanted characters. There was all types of different things that you could do in this game. You didn't have to do like the main missions all the time. You could just do like optional missions. And if you are, if something I want to mention here with those um, optional missions, it's a lot of different variety. You can ride in the Jackal, which is basically, it, it reminded me of Star Fox mixed with Mass Effect, Star Wars, um, a little bit of a uh, crisis here and there and um, all those different types of games thrown into one from just playing the optional missions and throughout the campaign uh, it, re it really reminded me of those games all put together and uh, for those optional missions something I want to mention is that if you are a trophy hunter and you love getting trophies and achievements and stuff whether you play on PS4 or Xbox uh, you can go after those achievements and get additional trophies or and or achievements I want to say from doing those optional missions and uh, it's a lot you can get I think I got like four or five of them from just from one particular mission I think it was like three to four at the most at least two you always get a, a trophy each time you complete those optional missions from those different planets where you have to clear the map and maybe you don't care about them but uh, it's an opportunity it'll come to the point where you're getting close to the end of the campaign where um, they'll tell you this is your last chance where you can clear the map and um, you know do those missions where you want to do you know all the missions that you want to do especially for the, the optional missions and stuff and you can go back um, and just get them all in one or maybe you want to do them one, as soon as you get the opportunity to like I did and uh, I'm sure I probably didn't get all the guns that you collect you can collect throughout the campaign uh, this will remind me from Battlefield Bad Company 2 campaign where you had to collect different weapons and pick them up and uh, each weapon that you picked up, it would count as uh, maybe possibly a trophy later on if you can get all those guns. And uh, I think it was the gun collector trophy. You get different weapons from picking those up. But um, the campaign was really good, honestly, the characters. And I just felt like I was watching a movie every time I was watching the cutscenes. And uh, it really got emotional towards the end. And, uh, just the loss of those characters and seeing, uh, you know, it could be their last time and really connecting with those those characters and really liking them. And this is something that I get from not only just the campaign of Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, but just JRPG games out there, Japanese RPG games, or just maybe role-playing games from anime-style characters and stuff like that that you get to feel for. You start to care for those characters and they become one of your favorite characters that you want to see uh, live and make it throughout the end and succeed and uh, some other characters you begin to feel for throughout this campaign and that's something i really got out of this game this game's campaign alone the fun factor and just the emotion just the intensity and just the gameplay itself and just the variety nothing was just the same to me it was something different every single time even though it was some of those missions where you had to just use the jackal and you switch off you get in the jackal sometimes and then you're, you'll be in, on the ground, you'll be on foot for a little bit, and then sometimes you're in outer space with one of the characters uh, teaming up and supporting them uh, throughout the mission, and then um, it'll just switch off from there, and then sometimes some of them are just exclusively jackal missions where you're just in the air, but um, something I want to mention throughout the campaign that I didn't really like is that the AI is just like, they'll ignore enemies and just kill it just <laughs> let you kill everybody else and just ignore the enemies and then some even in one particular mission i think when the bots started attacking uh, and the bots come to life in a particular mission and then they start attacking and beating down on the ai characters where you can't even defend them so i just ended up failing the mission so many times trying to defend my ai characters trying to succeed through the mission and then once I decided to not try to defend my uh, teammates the AI characters uh, they end up killing me they end up coming for me and then it, it was just something that frustrated me throughout the campaign and something I want to also mention is that some people might not be as good with the jackal controls because something that I want to also mention uh, from based on my experience from my videos is that uh, I even forgot that I could use missiles throughout my uh, jackal uh, for instead of just using the regular guns, the cannons and stuff that 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 you can use to switch for, for offense and stuff. And then you can protect yourself with flares when you have incoming missiles uh, attacking you. But something else is not even just the controls, but sometimes when you try to focus on a particular target, you can't. Uh, just fight everybody at once because they'll end up shooting you and you can't even really tell where you're getting shot from and then once you it'll say you're getting shot from this direction and then over here you have like 
other different types of ships and one of those most wanted characters uh, shooting you and you only could use like flares once and so you might have like a ridiculous amount of missiles coming at you i haven't played it on a harder difficulty like veteran and uh like that but i played it on a regular difficulty i had enough trouble right then and there uh trying to defend myself from the ships so that was just something else that uh I didn't really like about the campaign besides just the, the the AI. But other than that, I really enjoyed the campaign, and I would definitely recommend it to anyone out there who probably might be who who may have you know skeptics out there who probably don't even want to play the game. Say, oh, I'm not going to play the game, and I'm not interested in the campaign. And I could also see it from those who are trying to be competitive players, MLG pros, because lots of people are trying to really get into the competitive scenery for gaming, for Call of Duty, become pros, join teams like Optic Gaming Phase, and just be a part of the pro scenery and uh, get their names known out there. So I've seen lots of people starting to really play it and take the game really serious. So uh, I think most people are really trying to uh, get into the competitive scenery now, and I can kind of see why they would skip over the campaign and jump right into the multiplayer. But me, I enjoyed the campaign for what it is, and uh, I would recommend it to anyone out there who hasn't played it yet. Maybe you saw a couple of videos, and uh, and from it, it just something I noticed from social media. Lots of people were saying good things about it, so it made me even more excited to jump in. And right now, now that I finished it and played it from start to finish, I'm glad I did. And um, I could definitely say someone out there, you know, others out there should play it. <clears throat> well, you might have some downtime to play. Even if you're trying to be in a, a competitive player, MLG Pro or something like that, campaign is definitely worth it and uh, worth the time to get into. Whether you do the optional missions or not, or just just focus on the main missions, you guys will definitely like it for what it is. But um, that's all I'm gonna say about the campaign, and I'm not gonna spoil any other thing besides that. Now I want to jump into Zombies in Space Land. Something else I want to mention. I don't know if I'm gonna how long I'm gonna go here, so I might end up combining two videos in one. Uh, for you guys to watch so it's just well, all in one single part so <clears throat> I'm gonna jump into zombies in space land now uh, this is definitely a different take in the zombies era me I'm not like a zombies expert I suck at zombies admittedly I'm not the best uh, at it I always die I'm usually the first one who uh, dies usually when I play with some of you guys subscribers and fans and friends around the world uh, you guys seen from the subscriber videos, I die a lot. I don't tend to last long. I even did like a solo run where I didn't even I only went to round five from Black Ops 3 from Dear Ice and Josh in front of uh, the giant trying to play solo. I always died so early on. I couldn't even get too far into the rounds. But Zombies in Space Land is really one of the uh, funnest zombie experiences I've ever played from the Call of Duty series. My favorite being the World at War Zombies, uh, in my honest opinion. But uh, Zombies in Space Land is definitely a different take. Sure, it looks different, and uh, the characters look maybe kind of or might may remind you of Nickelodeon and you know Slime Time and stuff. But uh, I I thought it was gonna really be bad when I looked at it and seen the trailer for Zombies in Space Land. I just thought it was gonna be a joke. But from playing it, it's a hell of a lot of fun. I would recommend it to anyone out there. Uh, I didn't really get too far into it. I think I got to like scene 12 or scene 11. Uh, they're not called rounds, but they're scenes, and it's like an amusement park for Zombies in Space Land. There's traps that you can use for the zombies and stuff. Uh, kamikaze clowns, I would like to say, just some killer clowns that are uh, that explode once you try to shoot them. So you don't want to get close to those clowns, uh, or that you want to die. Uh, and, and if you get killed, by, hit enough times, oh, you'll die. <clears throat> And something I really like about the depths in this in Zombies in Space Land, you get an actual second chance. It's not really all the way over yet. You know, you just got to watch the spectate and hope that your teammates can probably, if they can't revive you in time, you still have a chance to come back to life. And this mechanic in Zombies in Space Land is something unique and something that doesn't really exist in the other Zombies game modes like War at War and, uh, you know, the other previous Call of Duty games that had Zombies uh, once War at War started it. But um, you can play these arcade games, which are pretty fun. Uh, I think you could shoot basketball hoops, and then you know those those other games that you should play. Those mini games that you play at the arcade, you know, Chuck, not Chuck. I would say Chuck E. Cheese's, Chuck E. Cheese's, uh, Jeepers, uh, Dave and Buster's, all those different types of games that you could play mini games of just to try to bring your soul meter up. And once it reaches the highest, you'll have a chance. To, once it reaches its full, uh, once it reaches the full meter completely for the soul meter uh, you'll be able to come back you'll go through a portal and you'll be able to come back to life 
And uh, I think that's something for players like me who suck ass at the game, you know, zombies, <laughs> being the zombies new, uh, that'll be something that'll come in handy. And, uh, and then instead of just leaving all the best players to do all the work, you can still have a chance to come back. But I think one particular mini game uh, where you have to knock the teeth out with the balls, I forgot the name of it, but um, that one is the best one because that one raises your soul meter really fast. And I noticed from my videos, from my experience, that one particular player didn't play anything. He didn't shoot basket. He didn't shoot any sort of hoops or anything like that. He didn't bother with any of the other mini games. That one um, raises your soul meter the most and the fastest, uh, the quickest. So you can be, get right back out there on the field, get what you want, stuff like that. But um, <clears throat> something I'm not too sure of is that you could come back out there and... Uh, I don't think you obviously would lose your weapons and I think you get cards and stuff that are uh, different abilities for your characters and stuff like that but um, I wouldn't really recommend that um, I don't think you can come back with all the weapons that you have obviously so you probably have to start over and just buy the weapons all over again so if you end up buying stuff um, in Zombies of Spaceland you might not have enough money to get like a better weapon so you might end up spending money trying to get a prize and stuff because it's prizes that, that could be won as well but I didn't get every single thing out of Zombies in Spaceland because uh, some players end up dropping there was some lag here and there but um and that, though, that's just the major positives for Zombies in Spaceland. But uh, if I were to say anything negative about it, I think just the lag will really hinder uh, your experience sometimes from time to time. It depends on how good the connections are. And sometimes when players drop, it can you, you can end up being left behind. And then sometimes if you're saving up for something like that, you end up dying because of someone else. Might not be as good as the game and stuff like that. At good at the Zombies in Spaceland. Uh, it can really hinder your ability to really try to get the weapons that you want, especially if you're trying to grind for tickets. Because uh, one of you guys told me that if you get like a specific number of tickets, you can get like one of the best guns in the game in zombies to really uh, do some damage that are really that's really OP. I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, other than that, I, I can't really think of any sort of negative things to say about zombies in Spaceland because it's hella fun, it's different, and uh, <clears throat> even if you don't like maybe. You're not interested in the multiplayer, which I'm about to get to, get into. Um, maybe you don't like the multiplayer, but you like zombies. You might just get the game just for zombies only, and you might be interested in that. Zombies is basically is just for you guys. If you guys like zombies and you guys uh, play nothing but that, and you're interested in the Easter eggs, but uh, other than that, uh, that's what I think about zombies in the campaign. Now let me just see how much time I have in this video, because I have a lot to say for the multiplayer. So what I'm gonna do right now. It's probably going to skip and teleport me or it's something like that. But I'm going to go ahead and start another part because uh, <clears throat> I have a lot to say as far as the multiplayer. I'm also going to talk about the remaster and then I'm also going to be comparing the remaster to this game. So I'm going to add another video uh, for this review. Hope you guys are enjoying it so far. And uh, please let me know what you guys think about the uh, my review and with some honest feedback and uh, whatever you guys think about the game. So I'll be right back with another a separate part to combine with this video. Okay, back. Uh, <laughs> I figured I'd combine the parts because I figured I was going to go a little bit longer. And, uh, <clears throat> I don't want to just have it two separate parts. I just put it all together into one. Now, we're going to talk about the Call of Duty Infinite Warfare multiplayer from those who have been waiting for this. And uh, now that I discussed uh, the campaign in the Zombies in Spaceland, which I both enjoy in... <clears throat> Now, it's time for the Infinite Warfare multiplayer. What do I think about it? I played the beta for Call of Duty Infinite Warfare right when they released it, when it was exclusive to PS4, um, both weekends uh, during the release week. Now, I'm going to be honest and mention that the servers weren't really all that good because the server and matchmaking errors were really crazy and out of control. Of course, it's a beta. and you know, some people say, oh, it's a beta, and of course, what do you expect? The game is not going to be 100% perfect. But yeah, that's the thing, though. But the, we should still should be able to find matches, and that was something that uh, I had trouble doing. And, you know, I didn't get that from the real game. But uh, the Call of Duty Infinite Warfare multiplayer is something, uh, a different take in the Call of Duty direction. It's nothing like this game. And I keep showcasing this because this was where... We didn't have jetpacks, we didn't have boost jumps and sliding and uh, all these ridiculous court, score streets and uh, the camping and all the, you know, 
the overpowered weapons. This game had like weapon balancing and all types of stuff. This is this, this is a different game compared to all the other games out there. Now, when I think of playing from my experience or just playing the beta and then the real game as it released uh, uh, early this no early November, uh, when I play Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, I think of what? I think of Black Ops 3 and I think of Ghosts put together in one. And I will also throw in Destiny a little bit from just the max and also Halo. I would throw all those games into one all at the same time. And a little bit of Mass Effect, um, I would like to say, you know, from just the weapons and the blasters and the, the space combat and stuff like that. But I would think I would throw all those games all into you know, all into one, especially Black Ops Three and Ghost. I would say it's just like almost it's well not now I take I take away Ghost. I would say Black Ops 3 and Advanced Warfare put together. That's what I really wanted to say. I was thinking about, I was trying to think of the other game mode, the other Call of Duty game that came out a little bit before then. So this game is basically Black Ops 3 and Advanced Warfare put into one. I would definitely say, honestly. But uh, that doesn't change the fact that the game is not fun. You know, the game's fun. And that's the most important thing that you can really get out of a video game, whether it's a multiplayer. It doesn't matter how it looks. It doesn't matter how the, the graphics and, you know, all that stuff. And I feel like some people out there forgot what video games are all about. Some people take it seriously. Take it serious to the point where, oh, if it doesn't look, if, if the graphics are not that good, you know, look at Black Ops 3 Old Gen for Old Gen for PS3 and Xbox 360. Look how ugly the graphics look. And why would people play this game? The graphics are shitty, and you know that's the kind of the the mentality most people have out there now. They have that when they look at a game, they want to look at the graphics. They don't look at anything else. Are you gonna have fun with the game? That's what video games are all about. And this is what I got out of Infinite Warfare because it's fun. Not even just the campaign. Not even the, the zombies. Just the multiplayer itself. It's fun. And I'm not saying the multiplayer is better than Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare 2, because those are the two best. Call of Duty games I play for multiplayer experiences, including the remaster. So it's basically the same thing as Call of Duty 4. But the the Call of Duty Infinite Warfare multiplayer is fun. It's different. We have what do we have here that's different now? We still have the wall running and we still have the the sliding and the specialists are basically in the game, but these aren't called specialists, these are combat reds. Now the combat reds are just basically to different abilities that you could use, like the Warfighter Synaptic different uh specialists well not special i keep saying specialists because that's what it makes me think of from black ops 3 it basically is but they're combat risk to fit the style of the player in the game like for me for my play my play style i can't sit in the corner and wait for someone to come out i can't sit in prone for like five minutes and just wait for someone to show up waiting waiting and waiting and waiting trying to get a kill streak not even contributing to the objective trying to build my score streak and kill death ratio uh, I can't play like that, and I think the Warfighter combat rate is perfect for me because I think it, it fits my play style being a running gunner. I gotta stay on the move. I gotta, I have to take the fight to my opponent. I can't sit in uh, stationary in uh, one spot and wait for someone to show up. That's just not my play style, and that's not how I learned how to play. And uh, I know some people say think of camping as a strategy. I can see you know some sides of that, but it's just not my play style. And uh, just the combat risk, I feel like they put them in the game. There's many different ones that you can pick with different, their own unique specialists, like the claw. Um, some of them are better than others. Some of the specialists, the combat risks, like he said, specialists, the combat risks are better than um, some others. And you might not like all the combat risks, but it's definitely, I would say, depending on your play style and what you like, if you really play with every one of them, you're bound to find a combat rig that fits you, the player. Uh, of the gamer on Call of Duty Infinite Warfare multiplayer is definitely a combat rate for someone out there and for everyone out there with for those who uh, play the game and experience it but um uh, would I say this infinite the multiplayer is for everyone no it's not it's not for everyone it's not for every single Call of Duty fan out there maybe you're a, a former Call of Duty fan that has moved on to other games I'm gonna get into that um uh, maybe you're a hardcore Call of Duty fan like me but i Grew up playing Gears of War, Halo, uh, Resistance, all types of different shooters, first-person shooter games out there. Um, yeah, it's something different, but 
the most important thing that I got out of it, get out of this uh, multiplayer, is just the fun factor. Even though I'm not as good as it, you know, as good as it as everybody else that's high level got all the best weapons and stuff. I don't know what all the best weapons are in the game, but um, the one thing I can possibly mention is this that uh, it's definitely something different compared to the other games. It's different and uh it's a different tape and look we're not even on the ground anymore we're in uh we're in space we're in outer space uh in space combat and these different events technology and gadgets and stuff lasers from the sky and um we got different types of grenades now that we can use different score streaks that are way different from call of duty 4 model for 2 model for 3 black ops series war at war and so on you know many of the other games out there from the call of duty franchise of the series but this is something different like the maps uh, something it just something that really just bothered me about this is just that the is is you can sometimes get it'll take some time for you to kill someone in this multiplayer it seems like they eat bullets a lot in this game and uh, it depends it's just like I guess I don't know I, I would say it's just a, it depends on the fire rate of your weapon that's just what I got from my my uh, experience. I think if you have a better weapon compared to someone else, if you're not quick to the trigger, you're probably going to get killed. And uh, even if you do shoot them first, they can still have that chance to turn around and kill you. And uh, it, it seems like it takes a lot longer for you to kill them in this game from multiplayer, just being honest. But it doesn't take away the fun, the fun factor or anything like that. But um, the map size, I would say the maps are not at least too, they're not too big like Ghosts. Because in Ghosts, they were ridiculously big. You didn't know where to go. You could Your opponent could be anywhere across the map. At least the map size are not really all that big compared to Ghosts. But uh, if you, it, it definitely takes some time for you to learn the maps, I would say. Uh, the guns, I don't, again, just like I mentioned, I don't know what all the best weapons are. But from my experience, I, I've seen, let's see, let's name a few guns. The K-Bar. The MV4, especially the MV4, and from the beta that from someone what someone told me in a party chat, uh, if you use that MV4 with the suppressor, it stops everything. You can get a lot of kills and a shit ton of you know a shit ton of kills and going uh, hella kill streaks and stuff like that. And you know the MV4, the Karma, I've seen some people uh, play with, but the most popular weapons and most used I've seen, the Kabar or the K Bar, the MV4, and the uh, the E Rad. I would say, and then some players here and there will play with the the longbow. Who those who like to get their snipe on out there, and then just the karma. But other than that, I haven't seen anybody use the light machine guns or any sort of different weapons besides that. And that's just where most of the players ha uh, have used. And then I think the FHP. I think the name of that game, that name of the gun is called. It's similar. It looks similar to the the P90 from Call of Duty 4. Uh, it looks just something like it, but uh, that's just another weapon I've seen. Those are the top weapons I see people use in the multiplayer. So I don't know if those guns are over overpowered. I can't really say anything as far as that goes, but um, it definitely takes a while for you to kill someone in this game. And it's just like, you know, even if you do shoot them up a, a couple times, it's just that. And sometimes, even with the guns, not even just having a just shooting someone for so long. There's lag in every single map that I play so far. You know, every single match, sudden lag spikes after, after a while, and just like even for just just playing for a little bit, you'll see some players just you know running in place like that, and then they'll teleport. And even when I had some kills in my line of fire, um, the guy ended up he was in front of me, and then he ended up behind me, and, and just completely in different directions sometimes. But the lag is there, and it, it can be frustrating. Where you're trying to, you know, play, you know, get some kill streaks and try to win, but it can really hinder your experience with when there's a certain lag spikes when you're trying to shoot someone. But the lag is still there in uh, in playing from those other previous matches today from all the different game modes I have yet to try out: Search and Destroy, Capture the Flag, and uh, and then some others. Random lag spikes. That's just something that's just there. And something else I want to just really mention there: the spawns. I got spawn kill. You know, the spawns were just really just all over the place. Like, for, I would even bring it up, just like I wanted to mention, just like from my experience today. I was playing Capture the Flag. The guy had the flag, and once I already got killed by someone else trying to, you know, play defense, I was playing defense at my base. I got, like, at least three or four kills once uh, the team was trying to rush to our base, trying to capture the flag. I was playing defense. I was the only one back there. So I ended up finally getting killed. 
I think from the side or maybe going towards the, uh, once, once I was trying to move, push up. Um, I got killed by someone else from the opposing team. I spawn, the guy, the one of the other teammates captures the flag from our base and Susie comes out as he's coming out the door. The, the game puts me in front of him. They put me right in front of his line of sight and right... <laughs> As soon as I even appear, I even have the kill cam. If you go back and watch it on the kill, you capture the flag. The guy just even sees me spawn. I get to see myself appear on the on the map, and the guy just shoots me easily. And what am I doing? I'm just watching the kill cam, and also I gotta wait another five seconds, four to five seconds to spawn as he advances with the flag, going towards you know attempting to score and capture the flag. So the spawns can be out of control too so that's just something else I wanted to mention about the multiplayer but um other than that I like the different abilities that you could use I like the the maps are pretty good and I'm still not used to every single map and uh, the combat rigs and stuff like that there's still different payloads that you can get and uh, different abilities that you can lock for those specific combat rigs not specialists good thing I didn't say that not specialists, but the combat reds. There's still different, lots of different unique abilities that you could pick. And uh, I wish you could probably customize your emblem. I wish you could do that because I would have loved to do that in this game, but you can't. But there's your, there's calling cards, different titles that you could pick in a lot from just leveling up, playing different game modes, uh, you know, unlocking stuff, and then just the calling cards, the emblems that you could select from that you can unlock. So I just wish you could customize your emblem like you could in Black Ops 2, but you can't do in this. You can't do it in this game. At least I don't think you can. But from what I've seen, but uh, you know, emblems, calling cards, and then different payloads from the different abilities from the combat rigs. Something else I want to mention: the supply drops. The good thing that I don't think you have to spend money. You just have to keep playing the matches, and that's what's really cool. You don't have to spend money like in Advanced Warfare because I didn't buy with those fucking supply drops because. I just ignored them throughout my advanced warfare experience, which is why I traded in the game because I couldn't really get into it like it was because it wasn't really as good uh, compared to Ghost, the two worst Call of Duty games ever. But uh, the good thing about the supply drops, you don't need to pay money and buy them. But um, the more you play these these private matches and public matches, or whatever game mode that you like to play, team deathmatch, front lines, and different things like that. I'm gonna also mention the game modes as well. But um, the good thing is you can the more you play these public matches, you can unlock these keys, these crypto keys to unlock rare supply drops or just the regular supply drops. And I think depending on what you get out of rare supply drops, you can get like a weapon with those camos. I've seen a couple players with uh, green and pink camos. I think like a reddish uh, camos. Those are really cool camos that I've seen on their weapons, like on the MV4. Lots of people like to use in the game. Um, I didn't get none of those yet. So that's something else that I also experienced that you can do in the multiplayer. Now, for the new game modes in the multiplayer, the only new two new game modes that are in this game, uh, I can't really call them really new game modes, but the only two additional game modes that are in this game, in fact, it's back in the game, by the way, but um, it's a mode called Frontlines. It's basically Team Deathmatch. It's like a two-round Team Deathmatch where you can just come back, and I think if you're in a base, you, can ha you have an opportunity, so if you're down in the first round, you can still have a chance to come back in the next round to bring your team back, especially if you're on a good kill streak with those good uh, score streaks that you could possibly have. But uh, um, once you're in your base, you can still have, you'll, you'll be given like armor, so you can be able to take additional uh, hits if you're in your base. But once you come out, you lose, you obviously lose that armor, uh, that armor feature for your character to uh, take more ammo, well not ammo, but more bullets uh, towards your opponents. But uh, Frontlines is basically like Team Deathmatch, but just the same, just two rounds and one <clears throat> with the armor feature and stuff. Now, the other game mode that's in this game for the multiplayer for Infinite Warfare is Defender. This is basically ten def Team Defender for Modern Warfare 3, but just without a flag. But instead of the flag, you have a drone. And the longer you hold this drone, the more teams you can, the more points you can score, and uh, the more points you can get for your team. So by holding this drone, you can pass it to other players. You can even throw it down just so you can defend yourself. So it's almost like the uplink feature. You can hit people in the face and smack them. <laughs> smack them in the face with the uplink if they're really up and clo up close to you. And uh, you can pass it to other teammates. You can even throw it to your opponent so they can't shoot you. Because you can't shoot while, of course, while holding the uplink. I mean, it would be sweet if you could hold it with, like, with your left hand. And then just have like a handgun if you have like a sidearm that can do that. But uh, you can't do that in this game. 
but that's the only game mode. Those are the only newest game modes. Other than that, they brought back in fact that ground wars on here. Uh, another new feature that they have on here that they uh, implemented from the uh, recent update is Terminal 24/7, which is just like Newtown, Newtown, uh, Newtown 24/7, Newtown 24/7 from Black Ops 2. So Terminal is just like the Modern Warfare 2 map where you can just play all nothing but Terminal, no matter what game mode you play, you just it's always going to be Terminal for that playlist. So other than that, I didn't spot any other new game modes besides that Gun Game is in there. Uh, that's not even a new game mode. In fact, it's just like I mentioned, it's back in there. I just played that uh, recently today. And then you got your standard game mode, Team Deathmatch, Free For All, uh, Ground War, Search and Destroy, Kill Confirmed is also in there. And it's also a competitive playlist for Uplink. So I think it's like teams of 4, 4v4, four, four four, which I did also. I tried to find Uplink, but I couldn't find a match. And that's something else I wanted to mention as well, is that you can't, find a match every single time for like some of those specific game modes that you want to play so it depends on the players and how patient they are because some of them will just leave in about like less than a minute if the game and no one joins and they'll try to find a different match or just join a different game mode but um there's the competitive playlist for four teams of four for those out, out, out there trying to be uh, pro players you guys can jump in those competitive play playlists and game modes like uplink capture the flag and then some others as well for that uh, for those specific competitive game modes and competitive players out there but uh i can't really think of anything else that i wanted to mention besides the multiplayer so uh it, it's it's I, it's just something that major i gotta just really just address here is just that it's not a multiplayer for everyone out there and i wouldn't blame anyone else out there for not playing it not interested in playing, saying the game doesn't look very good, it's not very fun, or maybe they just don't like it just because of how it looks, and just the face, you know, based on the setting, and just the face, the fact that it's space combat, I can't blame anyone out there. And something else, there's a shit ton of shooters out there, so lots of people have migrated to Battlefield, which I also like, I love Battlefield 2, Bad Company 2, my favorite, but uh, there's a lot of shooters this year, this year, so even if you're not playing Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, uh, some people are interested in just playing the remaster instead and some people probably end up getting the bundle you know the both games and don't even touch infinite warfare they don't care about it they don't they're not going to ever play it they're just going to focus on a remaster which i can also understand but there's also more shooters out there lots of different first person shooters and i think this is the year there has been the most first person shooters that has ever come out so let's see let's name a couple of them maybe all of them Battlefield 1, we got Battlefield 1, the new Titanfall, Titanfall 2, Overwatch, Destiny, uh, what else do we have? And of course we have Call of Duty, and then I would say Homefront, but I heard that, that's not even really all that good. We got all those different first person shooters, you know, Battlefield, Overwatch, Destiny, Titanfall 2, and you know, all these different shooters, you know, and I'm sure most people are not playing every single shooter out there, they have a preference. And uh, you guys, I can't even blame for those who have migrated and, you know, jump ship. Oh, I'm just going to play Battlefield this year and skip Call of Duty. Out here and just probably just play the, if I am going to play Call of Duty, I'm just going to play the remaster, which I understand and see uh, some people uh, understand how they feel in their positions. So uh, that's, that could also be a factor as well because some people not, not, might not even like it because it's nothing like the other Call of Duty games. It's not boots on the ground. It's just space combat. Black Ops 3 with advanced warfare, what people might say, and just maybe a copy and paste Black Ops 3, people would like to say out there, I've seen copy and paste, it's Black Ops 3 copy and paste, but just in space and stuff, but um, I can see where people are coming from and not liking it for what it is, and it's, it's definitely changed, and this game is definitely something different and a different take in the Call of Duty direction, and which is why I understand people might not like it for what it is. Might say it's shitty, the multiplayer is a waste of time, and you know, the remaster is just where it's at. And uh, <clears throat> I can understand. And uh, I'm, I'm just going to quickly talk about the Modern Warfare remaster, and then I'm going to give my score for Infinite Warfare. And uh, that's going to do it for my review, and uh, that's going to uh, do it for this video. But uh, the remaster, something I want to mention is just like Call of Duty 4. Share it again. It's just like this game, but it's just remastered from the ground up, graphics wise and everything. Now, for the remaster, something I don't really like about it is that there's a shit ton of campers out there. Everyone's wearing fucking Juggernaut. Everyone's wearing it. 
for every single gun class that they have. It doesn't matter if it's an assault rifle, assault machine gun, light machine gun, snipers. Even snipers are running around with a juggernaut. And it's just a trend now. Every single player has it. And something that I noticed is that juggernaut is lasting longer in the Modern Warfare remaster, it seems, because... It seems like it takes a lot longer to kill them because they last longer with this Juggernaut perk. So I'm hoping that they turn it down or nerf it because it seems like the Juggernaut perk is really ridiculously broken in the game because everybody's using it and, you know, it makes a factor. It's a major factor in these gunfights when you try to play, get to headquarters. Oh, I couldn't kill him. Why? Because he has Juggernaut. And when you don't have it, it, it gives them an automatic uh, advantage no matter how good you are. Because if, if you're trying to shoot two people, it's more, more than one person that's wearing the Juggernaut is more than enough. And that's just something that really frustrates me about the remaster and just how people are playing it now. Just the fact that there's campers in both games. Juggernaut is just like a major factor and a major trend in players on the remaster now. And everybody's using it no matter what. That's something that I'm not liking about the remaster by far. But other than that, it's really good. The campaign is just the same. And I played that again, basically. I did originally play the original Call of Duty 4 campaign this year. Uh, on my channel and I also did the remaster campaign for start to finish as well again so it it definitely looks amazing it's really fun it's just as good as Call of Duty 4 but that just that juggernaut is just really annoying that's the only thing and it kind of feels different from just playing it and uh, it's just a different feel now uh, compared to the original but it's still good it's still fun and uh, the maps are just still the same same original maps shipment being my favorite but uh, the multiplayer is really good, awesome. So none of that really changed. But it just seemed like they they made a, co a couple tweaks to it. And that Juggernaut seems to be lasting a lot longer than it did originally from the original version. Uh, than it did from the original version from PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. So I really don't understand what's going on with that. But that's just my major issue with the remaster. And that is really good. But uh, I just wanted to mention those things and I'll talk a little bit about it. Now, what am I going to give Infinite Warfare? I'm going to score the, uh, I'm going to give the game a 7.5 out of 10. Why? Because the major point that I wanted to bring up here is just that there's still lag and there's still problems with the spawn, but it seems like it senses the fact that it's a different take in the Call of Duty uh, direction for uh, those out there who are hardcore fans of it may have jumped ship to other games because it's not that good compared to some other people, other, uh, games out there first person shooters games out there like titanfall battlefield one and many others out there destiny overwatch and uh many others gears of war i want to also i forgot to mention that's just another shooter all these damn shooters out there first person shooters that people can play but uh not only that it's just different but it's nothing like compared to the other games from the um, the past the originals from boots on the ground and people might not like the boost jumping, the connections, and the spawns, and the maps, and just the combat res, and just everything about it. Not even just that, but uh, it's just the fact that just the campaign and the zombies seems to be where, uh, you know, most people might think that where it shines the most. But me, I like it because it's fun, but it's not really, I wouldn't say it's the best multiplayer compared to the, what's, what else that's out there. Compared to not only the first person shooters, compared to the, all the many other shooters out there that are available to get and play for those out there who love first person shooters, but it's nothing like it. it it's not. It's not really up to par multiplayer wise to Call of Duty 4 and the original games that really made it for what it is today. But it's definitely not a game for everyone. It's not the multiplayer is not something for everyone. I would say. And maybe if you probably want to get the game, you'll probably most likely be playing the zombies in Spaceland if you really don't like the multiplayer for those who don't like it. Now, if you like it and you and you enjoy it, maybe you're trying to get into the competitive, competitive scene, of course you're going to be playing it more. Of course you're going to try to learn and get better and try to learn the maps and find what best suits you, the combat res and your play style, find your best maps and, you know, find your 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 groove in the game, in the game itself. So... I would just definitely see that if people didn't like the multiplayer, they would probably just end up playing the campaign and just the zombies. Or maybe if they don't like the campaign, they'll just go get the game just for zombies and then they'll be playing a damn Modern Warfare Remaster. So that'll just be their Call of Duty multiplayer experience. So in my honest opinion, this game is not for everyone out there. It's not even for every single Call of Duty fan because some fans out there do not like the game. And that's just something that I wanted to really bring up and constantly mission throughout my review so it gets a 7.5 for me it's good it's fun 
uh, if you the campaign is really worth it, I would definitely recommend the campaign. I can't really say I recommend the multiplayer too much because it's not it's not something for everybody out there, and it it could be a turnoff to other people. And I've seen many people say it before, so that's the score it gets from me. And uh, I'm gonna give maybe I'll give a, a score from my own for remaster. I'll give it a uh, I'll give it a nine a nine out of ten. And it, the only thing that really bothers me is just the juggernaut. You know, I would give the I'll give it a 9.5. I'll get a model one for a remaster a 9.5. But just the only thing that's really bothering me, the campaign's still the same. And it's just awesome how they remastered this game from the ground up. But that only thing that really bothers me is just the juggernaut. And then the whole multiplayer experience seems a little bit different and from the way the players are playing it now. But that juggernaut seems to be a major issue that needs to be turned down. And then uh, other than that, yeah, it has been uh, some kind of lag here and there. You can't get away from the lag. But I'm definitely going to get Modern Warfare Remaster a 9.5 because it's just as good as the original game. But they, I just hope that they really turn down the Juggernaut, hopefully. And uh, I don't know. We'll just have to see what happens. But that's just my honest opinions about the game for Infinite Warfare and Modern Warfare Remaster based on my experience from playing the game. Uh, let me know what you guys think about this review. I know it's been really long uh, combining these two videos together. So uh, I'm thinking about doing this a lot more, reviewing these games and having fun doing this as uh, this is what I love doing on a daily basis so please give you guys give me feedback about what you guys think about this video and uh, maybe the game yourself and what games that you guys are interested in I'm sure there's going to be other people who don't like the game for uh, many reasons so thank you for watching and feel free to share your thoughts below and uh, let me know what you guys thought about my review uh, here at Call of Duty Infinite Warfare and the remaster and also your experiences as well